Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Scott Sports 101. I'm Scott Trello. We're going to talk Browns, Cavs, Guardians. We'll talk about NFL, the NFL Combine, and free agency in the draft. And uh, and so uh, we'll talk about all that. But first, here is today's Scott Sports 101 trivia question. Which NBA player holds the record for the most regular season uh, wins? And for the season wins, I will have the answer. Uh, later in the podcast. Uh, uh, after a uh, after a uh, one uh, fourteen to one oh eight. Win over the uh, Charlotte Hornets last night, uh, in which uh, in which uh, in which uh, Darius Garland led the way with twenty eight points, and Donovan Mitchell chipped in twenty three. Uh, Karis Levert uh, fifteen, and the Mobley chipped in eighteen points, and. Uh, uh, Ricky Rubio chipped in 11. Uh, the uh, Cavs will be uh, back in uh, action tomorrow night as they will, as they will, uh, uh, as they will take on the Charlotte Hornets tomorrow night at, uh, in Charlotte, at, uh, Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we'll see if the Cavs can make it two in a row. Uh, Tip-off for that game uh, will be at 7 p.m. on Bally Sports, uh, Great Lakes, Ohio, I believe. Yes, it's on Bally Sports, Ohio. Uh, And Jared Allen is still out uh, with an injury. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Jared Allen is still out with an injury. He is still out with one, so he, it's questionable whether or not he'll play tomorrow night. He has an eye injury, so uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. So, uh, and the Cavs are having to make some adjustments and in the rematch. And so, uh, and uh, and the Hornets are going to try to end their two-game losing streak. And uh, right now, it's the Cavs are in fourth place in the Eastern Conference, has won four of its last five games, and Charlotte uh, resides in four, <clears throat> 14th place. And uh, this will mark the second meeting between the two teams in three days. In the same building after the Cavs rallied to win 114-108 uh, uh, last night. Now, starting the game off strong and not waiting until the second half, Cavaliers guard Darius Garland said uh, they needed adjustment. Yeah, and we knew that we were going to come in and and try to fight. And uh, and so they, they will need to do that. And the health stats of players is bound to be in the pregame conversation, and uh, Garland missed Friday night's loss with Miami uh, in six consecutive games, uh, where they score a, a quad before scoring a game high twenty-eight points Sunday. Uh, teammate. Uh, Teammate Jared Allen missed Sunday's game because of an eye injury uh, sustained late in Friday night's game. Allen is, Allen is important for the Cavaliers because he averages 33 minutes for a game when he plays, so we'll see if he'll play tomorrow night. And, uh, Kelly Jr. was the top scorer for the Hornets in six, six consecutive games, but after playing Saturday night in a loss to Utah, he sat out Sunday's game with a sore 
uh, back. His status was, is, was unclear until close to game time, so it might not be a long-term absence. And so we'll see if... Uh, And we've got a couple of uh, we got a couple of turnovers and got some baskets going. Carlin said that uh, really set the tone for us, forcing turnovers on, and defense. That what we uh, pride ourselves on. So what? So that's what we're going to try to keep doing. Karis Levert was uh, back in reserve role with Garland in, in the starting lineup. Yet Levert's contributions uh, included 15 points and four assists. So. Uh, we shall see what they do tomorrow night. And we'll let you know if Jared Allen will play. You'll see that game at 7 o'clock. Tip off on Bally Sports uh, Ohio. Uh, unfortunately, Saturday, the Ohio State Buckeyes were eliminated, unfortunately, 66 to. Uh, 80 to 66 uh, in the Big Ten tournament. They lost to number one Purdue, 80 to 66, as I mentioned. And uh, and they they never led in this game. They never led once in this game. And And uh, they just really, and this was Purdue's third, uh, won its third matchup of the season against Ohio. So there was a third one. So, and uh, uh, and uh, Purdue uh, basketball advanced to the second straight Big Ten tournament uh, title game with an 80-66 win over Ohio State. And uh, this was not the Ohio State just could not keep up uh, with. Uh, With uh, uh, Purdue, they just could not do it. And uh, they uh, were, uh, and uh, they got in a lot of foul trouble, and they really, and It was just a hard loss for Ohio State. It was. It was a tough loss. And they had, at the free throw line, Ohio State's game, uh, Gene Brown, excuse me, the third, was in the process of scoring what would have been the final points of the season. And finally, out of gas, number 13, Ohio State, had made its way into the Big Ten tournament semifinals with wins over – Wins against number 12 seed Wisconsin, number 5 Iowa, and number 4 seed Michigan uh, State. Uh, uh, on on uh, successive days, but number 1 Purdue was a uh, bridge too far. And the Boilermakers led 78 to 64 and were felting away the final seconds with Brown at the line. When Ohio State coach Chris Holtman called his point guard over, freshman Bruce Thornton voted a team a team captain at the midpoint over the year, and a primary reason for why the Buckeyes were able to do what they did in the United Center and made its way toward the bench as Brown sized up the rim. But looking um, on Holtman, uh, put his arm around. Thornton, and there was no pointing out the upcoming action with the Buckeyes. Uh, uh, for the Buckeyes might need a run or defend against no urging to find a way to pull off a late rally or extend the game. There was just a, this was just a coach, one of his primary hopes for better things ahead next year on the final 30 and in, in the final 30 seconds of the 2022 2023 season that started off with a promise took the most significant nosedive in nearby 30 years and ended up on an uh, uptick. And uh, so that's the thing, and uh, it's over for for the first time 
Since 2017, Ohio State won't play in the NCAA tournament and won't even participate in uh, NIT, although Athletic Director Gene Smith publicity uh, lobbied on behalf of the Buckeyes to be considered despite a sub-500 record heading into Saturday's game. Mounting injuries have made the transition into the offseason for next game slated sometime in November. So, and uh, so, and so, uh, and about what, and that's to answer, so that might be the answer to your question. And what, we have some injuries beyond uh, kind of what's uh, public that made it difficult right now. To be quite honest with you, uh, that we have to really get, uh, to really get, and we have to get some of our guys uh, back, Holtman said. They are not significant, but they need to be tended to, and they need some time off. So that might answer your question of what's next. So uh, so now the offseason begins for the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes men's basketball team. So they'll prepare uh, for the upcoming season in November. And so, and, but the, Mac tur- the uh, tournament will continue on. So. Uh, so uh, that's just uh, sort of what goes into this. And right now, it's time to reveal the answer to today's Scott Sports 101. Uh, uh, trivia question is, well, which NBA player holds the record for the most uh, regular season wins? And if you said Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you are correct. But now that record has been... His uh, record of scoring points has been broken by, you guessed it, LeBron James, King James himself. And uh, and right now, uh, we're going to talk some Browns right now. Uh a couple of weeks ago, the Browns on, on Friday, March 3rd, the Browns moved up the Vicar Town uh, as their new uh, assistant head coach slash uh, special teams coordinator. Veritone has coached one of the league's uh, top special teams units uh, with the uh, Colts. And as I said, assistant head coach, special teams coordinator. Uh, Ventron comes to Cleveland after spending the last five seasons in Indianapolis, where he, uh, where a top ten teams, where a top ten special teams unit in each of the last uh, uh, three seasons, NFL analyst Rick Goslin ranked Indianapolis eighth in the NFL special teams last season, second in 2021, and fourth in 2020. Ventron joined uh, its 2018 in 2018 after spending its first three seasons as a coach with the Patriots, where he was an assistant special teams coach and helped them win Super Bowl XL uh, in 2017. We are thrilled to add Bubba to our uh, coaching staff. And head coach Kevin Stefanski said he brings a uh, proven track record as both player and coach in this league and as a player, he built a reputation as a special teams, uh, as a special teamer during his ten-year career. He used that experience to make a successful transition to the sidelines, where he units, where his units have routinely performed at a high level. He has uh, infectious passion for the game, and we are excited to have him leading our special teams unit. Ventrone, a Pittsburgh native. He initially entered the NFL as a safety in 2005 when he signed with the Patriots and as an undrafted free agent following his college career with Villanova. Despite his undrafted status, he was able to carve a 10-year to carve a 10-year career in the NFL because of his talents on special teams, where he was an excellent performer on uh, kickoff plays. Uh, Ventron played for three teams, including the Browns, from twenty uh, from two thousand nine to twenty twelve. His longest tenure with any team, 
and appeared in 97 career games with 13 defensive tackles, one of the forced fumble, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and 57 special teams on all 13 tackles uh, were with the Browns, as well as 31 special teams tackles. He played uh, a key, a both on a key role on both kickoff return and kickoff coverage, helping the Browns to an NFL best average starting position of 31 and 4 and a league best defensive kickoff return average of 18.9 in 2009. He also registered a 35 yard uh, run on a false punt, which tied for the longest run of the season for the Browns in 2012. As a coach with the Colts, he helped multiple special teams players land on the Associated Press All-Pro team, including uh, Ashton, uh, Ashton Doolin, special teams uh, player, second team in 2021, Luke Rhodes, long-term snapper, uh, first team in 2020 uh, and 2021, and second team in 2020. Uh, and George uh, Odom, special teams player, first team in 2020. Rhodes was also named to the Pro Bowl in 2021. Uh, while the Browns, uh, with the Browns, Ventron will now look to uh, evaluate a special teams that features second-year kicker Cade York and five-year veteran punter Corey uh, Bajorez and eight-year veteran uh, uh, left safety Charlie Hewitt. Browns have made a lot of coaching changes uh, this offseason, and I feel they were needed. Uh, they, I feel they needed to make uh, these coaching changes. And the NFL Combine just concluded. Uh, and, and the first time he addressed, Stefanski addressed the coaching changes, and that was on Monday, March, uh, Monday, February 27th. And so, uh, and they were uh, the most changes that have been made to Stefanski's uh, coaching staff since 2020 in an off season. So, and so uh, they really uh, and they added also some new roles, six six new roles after staff members who were assigned to new roles uh, to help them improve and. Uh, so uh, and uh, so they really made some changes and with the uh, and uh, um. And so uh, they uh, really uh, have really made a lot. And they needed to make these changes, no doubt. And uh, and there's also uh, and as the NFL combine did conclude. They looked at a lot of top prospect performers of the 2023 Combine. And here are the uh, te- – and the next step is now the draft. And uh, with the completion of the Combine, the league's rookie class is looking ahead to the next big event on the calendar, April 27th and 28th and 29th, which is the draft. NFL draft officially begins. The Browns were noted several times this offseason. Don't have their – First pick until number 42 overall uh, in round two on April 28th. But they kept a close eye on the prospects at their top at their top position, positional needs last week in Indianapolis, who might who might have caught uh, their eye in workouts. And we are looking at some of the measurable uh, measurables at defensive line. And wide receiver to answer that question. And so, uh, 
You know, uh, D5, take over D5, uh, some top prospects. Uh, defensive tackle, uh, Kalia uh, Keeney from uh, Pittsburgh University. Keeney was one of the, uh, Kansi, excuse me, Kansi, excuse me, uh, Kalia Kansi, excuse me. Kansi was one of the top uh, defensive line stars on the performance uh, day, clocking a 4.67 40-yard dash time. That was the fastest by a, a defensive tackle since 2003. 40-yard uh, uh, times for linemen don't always carry significant weight, but Dancy's uh, blistering pace for a player at 280 pounds is especially jaw-dropping. He might have pushed himself out of the Browns' draft range with his uh, solid day. If not, uh, he'd be an intriguing option for the Browns' defense, defense that needs more power uh, in its defensive interior. Uh, next one is an edge, uh, uh, edge player, uh, Atom, Atomiwa, uh, Adobauer, Northwestern University. Adobauer had an, an arguably the best, uh, performance by any defensive lineman, uh, in the class with a, uh, 4.49 40-yard dash, 10.5 uh, broad jump, and 27 bench press reps, all, with, all of which were among the best uh, were among the were among the best at the position uh, uh, out of a war that eclipsed Aaron Donald uh, 4.68 for the fastest 40-yard dash time by a player over 280 pounds since 2003. Now, his top-tier uh, athleticism is uh, undeniable after the weekend. He might have given himself a better shot at landing early in round two. And now we have a wide receiver, Trey Palmer of Nebraska, which I like him. He's a good prospect for the Browns. Uh, Palmer was expected to be one of the speediest players in Indy and be uh, fulfilled. These uh, to be full, he fulfilled those expectations, excuse me, with uh, a 4.33 40 yard dash time that let all receivers, Palmer could be an intriguing pick on day two or three and uh, totaled 1,043 receiving and nine touchdowns at Nebraska last season. Uh, another player on the, uh, on, on the list is, uh, Prospect list is defensive tackle Jalen Redman. Red, Redman wasn't considered near the top of the defensive tackle prospect list before list before the week, but left Indy regarded as one of the most athletic defensive tackles of the class. Uh, a 4.81 40 yard dash time and 7.3 second run in the third cone drill showcased uh, his explosiveness. And fluid and fluidity, and made him one of the best defensive line performers. He was initially projected as a late round pick, but would now become an intriguing uh, mid round option after a tremendous showing. Wide receiver Josh Downs is the next one. Uh, University uh, UNC, I think it's University of North Carolina. Uh, Dennis had been considered a late day, uh, day one or early day two pick, and he might have been, he might have elevated his draft stock with a 4.48 40 yard dash time. We won't know until the draft wears down, uh, where, where Downs lands, but he could be a difficult, speedy, needy to pass up if if he's still on the board at, at number 42 for the Browns. Uh, and next one is a defensive tackle, uh, Keanu Benton, Wisconsin. Benton was uh, second among uh, defensive tackles with 7.34 seconds in, three in the three-cone drill, a good indicator of his explosiveness that helped him become one of the best defensive tackles in the nation Last year, he also ran a solid 
in the uh, 40-yard dash time and a broad jump of 9.3, of 9.3. And the final one we have is defensive tackle, uh, Mazi Smith, Michigan. Smith let all defensive linemen with 34 reps on the bench press. The bench press is arguably one of the least valued drills of the combine, but it could still be notable for the Browns in their evaluations of Smith, who has been one of the most commonly mocked players of the Browns in uh, draft projections. Now, the Browns did go out the combine. They are now looking ahead to free agency in the draft, and they would need to get some vets to come here. And they're looking at a lot of prospects, and they finished up restructuring uh, Deshaun Watson's contract, giving him a little more cap space. So we shall see what happens in free agency. And we got to quickly get to the Guardians news. They lost uh, to the uh, Los, Los Angeles Dodgers 11 to 4 in Catches League play. Uh, Cam- Camelback Ranch uh, Park in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, they uh, uh, they scored four runs, and uh, 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 there was a home run. Now the Guardians will be back in Cactus League play tomorrow, as they will take on the Los Angeles a- Angels at Anaheim at Goodyear Ballpark in Goodyear, Arizona. First pitch at four hundred five on Valley Sports Ohio. That's just about going to wrap it up for the Scott Sp- for Scott Sports one hundred one this edition. I'll be back later this week with another podcast. But until then, always remember: be a team player each and every day, and every way possible. So long, everybody. Three, two, one. I'm done.